Thomas Roma photographed scenes of everyday life in churches, in courthouses, on streets, in people's living rooms. Two years ago, he asked his eight-year-old son, Giancarlo, to imagine the stories behind some of his photographs. Giancarlo sorted through a huge stack of his dad's pictures and wrote about the ones that he liked best. His essays and Roma's photographs have been published together in a book called Show and Tell. Hilary Frank spent an afternoon in Brooklyn at their home with Thomas and Giancarlo Roma. We've always done father and son things, whether it's thinking of building a rocket ship, building a go-kart, or this. We've always wanted to do something together. From the beginning, I thought that this might be an opportunity for John Collar to get to know me in a way that I couldn't say in words. And um, I had a friend who was 56 years old and he died suddenly. And it, was, it became a, such a shock to me that um, I, I, I was confronted with my mortality in a new way. He was just about my age. And I had realized that John Collar had just uh, he just became old enough where if I did die, he would remember me. You know, some nut screaming for his wife saying, where's my wallet? You know, where's my keys? You know, I'm late for work. You know, what could I do? Sit down with him and say, you know, dad's afraid of dying and this is what you should know about me. And I realized that most of whatever I'm about, I'm not in touch with anyway. <laughs> um, but hopefully it's in our work somewhere. Thomas pulled out a huge box of his old pictures and gave them to his son. He didn't tell Giancarlo that he wanted this to be a bonding experience. Giancarlo immediately approached the project as if he was hunting for clues about his father. In his essays, it's almost like he's solving a crime. He'll notice things like a wedding ring being on a guy's right hand instead of his left, which he decides must mean the picture was taken in a mirror. He clearly has a love for art, which he describes in his intro to the book as a hungry, choked-up feeling. Here's John Carlo reading from his essay entitled The Lost Umbrella. The tilted umbrella creates a polygon-shaped shadow that looks as if it can fill the empty part of the sky that the trees make. You can see it better if you squint. Was that something that occurred to you, Tom, when, when you took the picture that the darkness of the umbrella and the shadow could fill in? the light there. Boy, I don't think in a million years I thought that. <laughs> I was so thrilled that he did. And uh, that, I think that word polygon is something you probably learned in school that year or the, or the year before. Um, so I was even shocked to hear it referred to as a specific shape. Um, I mean, it's the way it's the way I hope people experience pictures whole and that a shadow is just as much substance as the thing, and, and he saw that. Can we turn to the one of the dad and the son with their heads on oh, the yeah. counter? Yeah. Okay. First, can you read it? Okay. Whenever a father does something around his three, four, or five year old, the child will usually copy him. When I was little, that's what I did. I think the dad is a fireman because he has a mug with number one fire. You can't see the AN on the other side. There are bills on the counter, and he's looking through the classifieds. Maybe he can't pay all the bills, and he's looking for another job. There's a piece of classified torn off on the counter. It could be a job that he might want. The drapes behind them make a beautiful triangle shape above their heads, and there's a wedding picture hung next to them on the wall that shows a happier time in the dad's life. This picture showing a father with a young child resting their heads on their arms makes me want to cry. When I read that one, I thought, those are such adult thoughts that you're having. And it, it was really surprising to me. Do you, do you ever feel like you're thinking more like an adult than like a kid? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it bothers me a little bit because I'm thinking you know, too far ahead of time or I'm thinking about all the things that can go wrong instead of right. But, um, yeah, it occurs to me sometimes. I think John Call is a very special boy, um, but I also think people underestimate children. And as special as he is, um, 
The main thing about the book is he was given an opportunity uh, to write about his own feelings. He was encouraged, he was treated as, as a peer, as a colleague. And just like any collaboration, sometimes there was friction, but it's mostly because I expected a lot of him. So I'm not sure if it's exactly that it's an adult. I think I think what he what he writes like is um, he writes as if he's a child whose feelings and opinions are valued. I got to see my dad's world, and some were sad pictures, um, and some were happy. And I think. He did the same thing as I did with about writing them as he did taking them. He was in different phases at different times, and that made him think differently about what pictures he took. He, his feelings, they don't control his heart, but his art, but they affect it in a way. I think this book is certainly um a landmark for us. He's going to be able to look at this after I'm gone or maybe 20 years from now I'll still be around and we'll be able to sit around and we could discuss how it not only marked what we were for each other but how it changed us. And do you feel that way too, that you have a deeper understanding of your father now? Definitely. I have a much better understanding of him. And if he was to die, well, I would definitely remember him for this in every picture. We have our fingers crossed, though. <laughs> for Studio 360, I'm Hillary Frank. To see some of Thomas Roma's photographs and read Giancarlo's descriptions of them, visit our website, studio360.org.